Ace and Nigundo. Nickname for this course? Keytree. This is part one. In part two, I'll be sharing the mnemonic to help you commit to memory the most distinguishing characteristics of this tree and its edible parts. Be sure to watch all of part one so that part two is understandable. It's a small to medium sized tree, 30 to 60 feet tall. Notice a dense round crown arising from the ground up. The trunk or multiple trunks of this tree are barely noticeable in many cases. It often appears with multiple trunks. The diameter of the trunks is between 12 and 20 inches. Rarely growing to a diameter of more than 3 feet. Again, notice a dense round crown arising from the ground up. Sprouts often occur growing out of the trunks. These are the cause for multiple trunks and thick branches. This is a mature tree. Light brown bark, deeply ridged, interlacing. The less mature trees have ridges but they're much more shallow. The bark also appears to have bubbles underneath it, which gives the trunk an appearance of having warts. This tree has a tendency of producing impenetrable thickets, which are represented to the right and to the left of the trunk you see in the picture. multiple trunks. It has an opposite leaf and branch structure. In part two, I will be associating the word octopus with opposite. In a later slide here in part one, I will be showing you where the word octopus is derived from. The key tree bears odd pennantly compound leaves. Pennant in botany means feather-like. The three leaves on the bottom right do bear something of a feather-like appearance. All four figures on the bottom row are complete leaves, just as the single leaf is on the top row. What makes these four complete leaves compound is the fact that they have multiple parts which makes them more complicated than simple. The leaves of the key tree being odd pennantly compound means that the leaf is topped off with one single odd number leaflet rather than two, which is an even number of leaflets. The leaves of the key tree appear with groups of three leaflets, five leaflets, and sometimes seven leaflets. The leaflets can be lobed. Here is a picture of three leaves on the left which are lobed. They have no association to the key tree but are just shown to give you an example of what lobes look like. The leaflets of the key tree can also be notched. These are actual key tree leaflets. This key tree leaf bears three leaflets. Each are of an ovate shape, not quite oval, but they are ovate. Notice the notches. There's a little bit of a lobe there. The leaflets can also 
produce these coarse teeth along the edges or what is known in botany as the margins of the leaflets. This key tree leaf bears five leaflets. The leaflets are of an elliptical shape. The leaflets can appear with elliptical shapes, ovate, or some shape in between. At survivalplantsmemorycourse.com on the fact sheet through the index of plants link of the Acer Nigundo, you will read references to the pedestal and the peduncle. This is the peduncle representing an uncle's body. He's standing there on the floor. The peduncle supports the flower head. So if you imagine this being an uncle's head, this is his body. If he were to extend his arms to his side, each hand represents a flower and each finger representing a petal. Now imagine that he holds a pencil in his hand, perhaps a pencil to draw this picture. Now the pencil is attached to the flower just as the pedestal is attached to the flower. Pencil, pedestal, pencil, pedestal. The pencil is in the hand which represents the flower. Then of course the pedestal is connected to the uncle's body. This is a picture of female flowers. The peduncles of the female flower can extend to a length of six to seven inches. The length of the peduncles reaching the length of six to seven inches also applies to the male flowers, which we will see a picture of on a later slide. The peduncles of the female flowers can support between 4 and 12 individual flowers. This is a close-up of the female flowers and notice the V-shape. I will be making reference to that V-shape in a later slide when we take a look at the fruit that is born by the female flowers only. Remember the peduncle and the pedestal. This is a picture of male flowers, multiple clusters. The peduncles of male flowers support between 4 and 20 individual flowers. Female flower clusters on the right, single flower on the left. Male flower clusters on the right, single male flower on the left. In an earlier slide I was telling you I will be making reference to an octopus as it relates to opposite. Well this is the first example and how these male flowers which do have a tendency to show this reddish tone or hanging in this key tree appear to be lots of octopi or octopus. I will be tying this association together in part two during the mnemonic. This is another picture of an octopus hanging in the tree.
this is a picture of the fruit. Remember in the earlier slide I was asking you to take note of the V-shape? Well, this is what it develops into. There is a seed on this side and a seed on this side. As a kid, I remember tossing these nutlets into the air and watching them twirl down to the ground, spinning like a helicopter. That is another term I'd ask you to remember. When we get to part two, is I will be tying in the word helicopters with the memory technique in part two. Now this picture shows us a group of fruit, again, produced by the female flowers only. Male and female flowers, by the way, are produced on individual or separate trees. Very rarely will you see the male and female flowers on the same tree. Here in this picture, you can easily imagine how these can represent a cluster of keys on a ring. Later in part two, I will be revealing what these keys are used for. The key tree. Here we have a picture of seven inflorescence. Inflorescence in botany means a cluster of flowers. Even in this case with this composite flower, which is usually associated with the sunflower or the dandelion, there are hundreds of tiny flowers in a cluster on this disc. But with the key tree, we have a form of inflorescence or cluster of flowers in what's called a raceme. Remember the peduncle and the pedicels? Well, all of it together with the individual flowers is called a raceme. An easy way to remember this term, not only for this plant, but other plants will be covering in this course and as a general term in botany think of this peduncle now as a racetrack or raceway now when the racers come in make their pit stops they fill up on fuel change up their tires they race back off onto the track in this form. Racine. Or you could think of it as race me. In fluorescence, when you think of a fl fluorescent color, it's very bright. An easy way to remember that term is by knowing, as most of us do, that even one flower brings brightness to someone's life or the room that it's in. But a cluster of flowers, more than one, would be that much more in fluorescence. Being able to identify the key tree in the winter after the leaves have fallen away is important because it can lead to a source of survival food. The inner bark, the cambium layer, which is the cellular layer between the bark and the wood is edible, as well as the seeds. The seeds are present year round, either in the tree or on the ground. The young leaves are also edible, but they have already fallen away. And the sap is consumable as well. 
how you would identify the key tree during the winter is by its winter twigs. They are consistent with the opposite pattern which we learned earlier. The buds are opposite of one another. The buds have pubescence or white small hairs on them. The twig has a white powdery substance on it which can easily be rubbed off with your finger. It is called bloom. The buds have a U-shaped leaf scar underneath each one where these leaf scars meet in the middle better seen here they form a point and this entire area is raised we'll see a better picture of this raised area in a later slide leaf scars are formed by the leaf stalk which was attached here in this fashion but fell off the previous year. This twig has a waxy texture, a terminal bud, terminal bud means that it's one bud on top. The terminal bud is pointy while the lateral buds which run parallel to the twig are ovate in shape. This is another picture of the winter twig. It has reddish to purplish bark with that waxy texture. Notice the pointed terminal bud. The figure on the right is an alternate bud arrangement which you will not see in the key tree or on the key tree I should say. Now this is the closest or a closer picture of the leaf scars where they meet in the middle it forms that point and all of this area is raised up notice how the buds lie flat against the twig covered with these small white hairs which is also known as down technically it's referred to as pubescence pubic pubescence it's another picture of leaf scars there notice the u-shape surrounding the bud this is a picture of the terminal bud on top it is protected by scales the terminal bud also has pubescence on it and again, it's pointy. This is a picture of a key tree leaf bearing three leaflets. Now the young seedlings and young saplings when and if they bear only three leaflets. It bears a remarkable resemblance to poison ivy. The key tree is harmless, but it's important to know how to distinguish the key tree leaf from the leaf of poison ivy. And there are two primary ways in which you can do that. The first way is to notice where the leaf stalk meets the stem. B 
be sure to look for the opposite structure where one leaf meets the stem in an opposite position of another leaf. Remember earlier how we talked about these leaves being compound or complicated because they have more parts. The parts being called leaflets. It's important that you remember you do not look for where the leaflets are joined to the stem or to the leaf stalk in this case because poison ivy also has compound or complicated leaves with three leaflets which also meet opposite of each other. Always want to make sure that you have a true leaf stalk and find where it meets the stem in relation to any other leaves on that stem. Now this is a picture of poison ivy. Notice how the leaflets are joined opposite of each other. They are also notched. However, these leaves, not the leaflets, but the compound leaf, meet the stem in an alternating form. Not opposite. The second way you can make this distinction between the poison ivy leaf and the key tree leaf is remembering that poison ivy leaves are born on brown stems which are sometimes which is sometimes associated with corrosion which then can be associated with poison or whereas the key tree leaves are born on green stems which is sometimes associated with something edible, something healthy. The edible parts of this tree are the seeds, the young leaves, the sap, and the inner bark, the cambium layer, again, the cellular layer between the bark and the wood. To learn how to prepare these parts, go to survivalplantsmemorycourse.com or just click on the link if you're watching this on YouTube, the bottom left hand side in the left column, you'll find the link there. Just click on it and go to Index of Plants and find Asu Nigando. And under the Methods of Preparation section, you will learn about how to prepare each of these edible parts. In part two, again, I will be sharing the mnemonic to help you remember or commit to memory the most distinguishing characteristics of this tree and its edible parts so you, that you would not have to depend on or rely on a book in, in an emergency. Thank you for watching. Be sure to click on part two.